Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I am honoured by the committee's invitation to testify at this very important hearing on HR 40 and the path to restorative justice. I will speak to my experience as an academic studying the issue of reparations and as a lawyer representing the victims of the Tulsa Massacre of 1921 in a reparations lawsuit against the state of Oklahoma and the city of Tulsa. In the short time available, I want to make the following points. Local, state, and federal governments were active perpetrators of race-targeted discrimination against and domination of African Americans during slavery and Jim Crow and beyond. These governmental institutions engaged in the massive social, political, economic, and cultural destruction of African American communities. Many of the perpetrators and victims of race-targeted state action are readily identifiable through a thorough investigation of existing historical records currently in the hands of public and private institutions. The race-based disparities brought about by federal, state, and local government discrimination remain baked into our governmental institutions, as well as the persistently segregated private social ordering those institutions brought about. Reparations addresses the ways in which these institutions entrenched race-based discrimination and domination throughout American social, cultural, economic, and political institutions. The committee should consider specific legal remedies to remove the time-limited bars against litigation, which are the major impediment preventing identifiable victims of extraordinary race-targeted state action to sue state and federal governments for financial damages. There have been multiple reparation-style lawsuits brought since the Supreme Court decided City of Richmond versus Croson, which have survived constitutional challenge. But reparations must also include rebuilding the social, political, economic, and cultural infrastructure of the communities destroyed by the state. Because without social, cultural, and political reparations, race-neutral programs of economic uplift will preserve the relative social and political disadvantage, domination, and disempowerment of African Americans across this nation. The urgent need for the HR 40 Commission and reparations as a path to restorative justice for the victims of state-sponsored racial injustice became clear to me in 2003. That's when I joined the Reparations Coordinating Committee, a group of lawyers led by Charles Ogletree and Adwa Ayatoro. Our legal team filed suit representing the more than 125 still living survivors of the Tulsa, Oklahoma race massacre of 1921. Now some historical context is in order here. On May 30th, 1921, some African Americans mobilized to stop a lynching in Tulsa, Oklahoma. One lynching had an effect on a whole community because in response, white citizens deputized by the police and aided by the State National Guard burned down the 35 city blocks of Greenwood, a thriving African-American residential and business district in Tulsa. Up to 300 African-Americans died in the massacre and ensuing fire. Overnight, 5,000 African-Americans became homeless. 3,000 terrorized people fled the city. The rest were rounded up and held under guard for days at the local baseball park and fairground. The Red Cross had to mobilize to provide tents for those who remained. The city of Tulsa and the state of Oklahoma moved quickly to suppress news of the massacre. Survivors were terrorized into silence. All mention of it was excised from official accounts of Oklahoma history. The details of the massacre only became public in 2003 after the state of Oklahoma formed an HR 40 style commission, including historians, lawyers, and activists to report on the massacre. The Commission's painstaking research through the historical record discovered much previously unavailable material. The Commission apportioned detailed financial damages and proposed that reparations be paid to the survivors and descendants. When the state refused to make good on these recommendations, we filed a lawsuit trying to, begin the, to complete the process begun by the Commission. The only impediment to our success, the court acknowledged, was a rule requiring the survivors to file any lawsuit within two years of the injury. These statutes of limitations are the major impediment to many reparations lawsuits. The Tulsa experience demonstrates that the harms of slavery and segregation scar our communities to this day. The city and state dismantled 
economically, politically, and culturally a specific community, African Americans in Tulsa. Subsequent generations of Greenwood residents have labored under the social and political disempowerment whilst trying to rebuild their community. The Tulsa experience is emblematic of many African American communities around this country. So whilst a monetary payment would count as a beginning, economic justice is not enough without racial justice to repair the specific race-based wrongs of the Tulsa massacre and its aftermath. To quote Harvard Law Professor and reparations activist Charles Ogletree, reparations are more than an exercise in education, remembrance, and apology. Reparations demand the political, social, and economic power and equality for African Americans that has been stifled and suppressed in America since its inception. Accordingly, I urge Congress to pass H.R. 40 as a first vital step on the path to acknowledging and accounting for the history of race-targeted discrimination and wrongdoing that has marked too much of this nation's history.